Answer continues next on AM 560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. I just want to get to some house cleaning measures before we welcome our next okay. guest. Um, the former head of uh, pretty the comparable person to Dr. Allison Awardy mm -hmm. of New York City. He told de Blasio about the, he implemented the vaccine mandates. He was in charge of the lockdowns. He was, he told de Blasio what to do. And he was caught earlier this week, thanks to Steven Crowder, with having a sex party, drug fueled sex party in 2020 and in 2021. So yeah. he has been fired from yeah. his job. He, are you ready for this? No, yeah. This should come as no surprise. He was the executive vice president and chief medical officer for SIGA, SIGA Technologies, which is a... Uh, a pharmaceutical Pharm infectious disease company. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, he's. Yeah. He yeah. Gone. I know a lot of people want him to go to jail because he ruined a lot of lives. Yeah. And a lot of people still don't have their jobs. First responders don't have their jobs in New York. Yeah. Because they wouldn't take the vaccine mandate that he yeah. put in place. So got that out of the way. Also, Ryan Roth, I don't even want to say his name. The the assass attempted assassinator of President Trump the second time, the golf course mm -hmm. guy. He's been charged federally now. Federal Good. prosecutors, um, they unsealed the indictment yesterday, alleging that he did intentionally attempt to kill former president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, a major presidential candidate. So now he could spend, if, you know, carries a maximum penalty of life in prison if he's, if he's convicted. Wow. But Good like though. father, like son. Oh, His boy. son got arrested yesterday. What for? Listen to this. Son of Ryan Roth, blah, blah, blah. 35-year-old Oren Roth, he was arrested after the FBI searched his home in Greensboro, North Carolina, and they found hundreds of files depicting child sexual abuse. Whoa. He has a criminal history, including arrest for DWI and assault on a female victim. So uh, they're both in jail, in separate jails, obviously, yeah. but they're both been busted. Wow. So, And I'm sure that they found all that when they raided the house <laughs> wow. after the assassination attempt. Yeah. So we finally got there. Good for them. All right. For charging him finally. Now, now we can say it's, it's, it's attempted assassination. Yes, you can say that because he's been charged with that right. at a federal level. Right. All right, let's welcome back to our program Chadwick Moore. You know, we only have, what, 40 plus days until the election. He is Chadwick, no, you might know, he's New York Times best selling author of Tucker, the biography of Tucker Carlson. And his Substack is Substack.com. And you can follow him on X at Chadwick Moore, M O O R E. Good morning, Chadwick. How are you? Hey, good morning. Always great to be with you guys. Great to be with you, too. So, as the election is fastly approaching, what are you doing with logcabin.org? And tell people what that is first. Uh, well, the Log Cabin Republican is the uh, nation's largest uh, uh, LGBT group for conservatives, for, uh, for gay conservatives gay Republicans, anti-left gay people, and their, and their friends and allies. I hate that word allies, but, you know, it's allies or whatever. Associates. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, Log Cabin is it's actually the oldest continually running LGBT organization in the country. It's over 40 years old. And uh, they've got, you know, we, we uh, back in 2020, we started this uh, part of Log Cabin called Outspoken, which is a sort of, a nonprofit where we, you know, particularly interested in issues of uh, uh, LGBT issues, issues of gender, uh, things like that, and just informing voters uh, about what's going on with the differences between the two candidates. Uh, and, you know, since we started in 2020, the LGBT vote for Donald Trump doubled in 2020 from 2016. It was really 16. Yeah, it was 14 uh, percent uh, for Donald Trump in 2016 and 28 percent for Donald Trump in 2020. And that's according to the New York Times. And, you know, they didn't want to publish that statistic. So it might even be higher. And this year, you know, we had a massive effort to, to get out the vote, to inform voters of what the difference is on these. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be even much higher for Donald Trump uh, this year for the LGBT vote. Yeah, well, I got to tell you, wait, wait, wait here, though. My governor, Governor Pritzker, or our governor, he says Trump hates the LGBTQ plus community. He says he hates gays he hates lesbians how can this be yeah i mean it's pretty amazing if you look at like 
look at what Kamala Harris and Tim Tim Walls when they talk about LGBT rights. Like, what are they really advocating for? They're they're singularly obsessed with basically the T part of it, which is where all the money is, all the big uh, so-called gay rights groups, like the Human Rights Campaign, GLAD. They're, they're just giving gay and lesbian people, they don't care anymore. It's all about the T and, and the other level, letters of the alphabet. Uh, and, you know, the things that they advocate for are the, the weird, disgusting parts that no gay person I know is for, the things like uh, this sort of like pornography in school libraries, for the medicalization of children, trans surgeries on children, for women, uh, uh, women's spaces being violated, uh, men entering into women's sports. These are this is what the Kamala Harris like what they think gay rights means and LGBT rights. And you look at Trump's record; he's got this. You know, he's very much a libertine. He's a live and let live guy. He obviously doesn't care if you're gay or straight or whatever. That's very clear. And, you know, and his record speaks for itself. He appointed the first openly gay member of U.S. cabinet. He appointed two openly gay federal judges. Uh, he's got many, many openly gay appointees. Aside from all of that, uh, you know, he there's so many things that people that the media hides that Trump did, such as his effort to decriminalize uh, homosexuality in the 69 nations where it's still legal, and about a half dozen of those where there's the death penalty. Uh, and uh, he expanded access to HIV medication. I mean, the list is if you go to getoutspoken.com, we track all this stuff, uh, and. Uh, it's just amazing that they don't want to acknowledge the fact that that still try to paint him as this anti-gay bigot, but there's nothing he's done yeah. that's been anti-gay. In fact, it's the opposite. He's he truly believes in uh, in equality for all Americans, which of course is different than equity, and not treating people uh, giving people special treatment, but everyone the same treatment. And he's against all this insanity that we've seen infiltrate the so-called gay rights movement, which is really destructive and, quite frankly, grotesque in many of its aspects. I mean, people have to remember Tim Walls, the governor of Minnesota, that's a sanctuary state for kids, minors who want to get sex change operations without their parents' permission. Yeah, it's 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 Gavin Newsom wouldn't even sign that into law in California. And Tim Walls did sign that into law in California. Tim Walls also signed into law a bill uh, uh, removing anti pedophile language from the state's Human Rights Act. So the Human Rights Act in, in Minnesota, uh, you know, defined that sexual orientation is, you know, you can't discriminate based on sexual orientation. It had a line in there saying sexual orientation does not mean attraction between we're not defining this as attraction between adults and children. Uh, there was a transgender lawmaker in Minnesota who wanted to remove that line, wrote it up, and Tim Walls signed it. Uh, this is insane stuff. And Tim Walls is creepy as all get out anyway. I mean, it, it, you just look at that guy, and I don't know. But uh, the fact that he signed it into law, it, it, this is really freaky stuff. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, do you know, know that, that they did that? No, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah, because I rem I remember this same trans uh, legislator who basically got up and abruptly walked out of the um, the the house because this trans person was upset. Oh, that's about right. Do you right. remember that? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and, and so many people came in to her defense. But I want to talk about Kamala. Uh, this video that resurfaced in twenty of, of a twenty eighteen parade with that French actor. Juicy Smollett. You mean Jussie Smollett? Juicy Smollett. Hey, this is MAGA country, okay? Hey, that's right. Chicago is MAGA country. I, I've never, by the way, Chadwick Moore, I've never in my life seen anybody in Chicago, except for you, what? going to a Cubs game wearing a MAGA hat. Oh, yeah, I was. Never. Listen, front row at the Cubs game. He was Let's front get it right. Row at the Cubs. Couple oh times. Gosh. Good for you. A couple times, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid. You know, come at me. I got my Trump chain on right now, Trump 2024 chain. <laughs> but, but, but. I, I, do you think this video, what's she saying, um, down, down with deportation? Oh, here, I've got up, it here. Up. here. You got the audio? Here we go, ready to go. Down, down with deportation. Up, up with education. Down, down with deportation. Up, up with education. Down, down yeah, you, you get the idea. And then she's going to the border. I mean, she was border czar for well, almost four years now. For the first time ever, she's going to the yeah. border on Friday. But doesn't this prove that that... You know, her, her lies about the immigration, her being the czar and everything. Listen, she's right here on video dancing, saying down, down with deportation. How do you think that's going to affect this race? She's just 
such an empty, hollow shell of a person. She's not even like a human being at this point. She's whatever she needs to be for anybody at any time. And I guess to an extent we expect our politicians to be that way, sadly. But with her, it's really into overdrive. And she's ran from every position she's ever had, yeah. you know, in the past. Right. Uh, either the time she was advocating for legalizing sex work, yeah, like completely getting rid of the death penalty. These are just the minor ones you don't even hear about. Yeah. The border, of course, being the, the biggest one where, yeah, she, yeah, I saw that video. And she's in there chanting along with these protesters. Uh, and now she's pretending what she going to how is she going to counter this? She's going to say she never agreed with that. What is she right. where does she go from here at the same time? For her voters, does it even matter? She wasn't even – never received one vote. These people do not care. They they do not care about substance or policy. It's just simply, I'm a Democrat. I have to vote Democrat. They're, they're, they're Borgs in that sense. So how many log cabin Republicans are there? And, on the, you know, when you're touring, because I see you were met in New Mexico. You also were in Charlotte. Um, what kind of response are you getting? Yeah, so there's uh, – back in – when we first started, in 2020, there were about – 36 chapters across the country, and today there are over 80, which has been amazing. They're popping up everywhere. So we just launched a chapter in New Mexico, another in North Carolina. Uh, we're getting ready to launch one in uh, Maine uh, and I believe also Alaska. And, uh, the, you know, the response is incredible. One, one of the things that we've also noticed is, is that a, a huge part of our audience is um, women, and it's suburban women, and, you know, in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. And we sort of realized that that uh, and a lot of people who show up to our our meetings, it's, you know, it, it, we have big crowds, you know, uh, you know, at the last time I think there was about in New Mexico, maybe about 80 people were there. And Rick Grinnell was there to speak. and It was wonderful. Uh, and uh, there was, a, um, you know, we, what we kind of realized uh, over the years is that a lot of the people who are finding, you know, our content are. Women who are, are on the fence uh, about maybe who they want to vote for, who they want to vote for Trump, they, they lean more conservative, but they've got, you know, a, a gay son, they've got a gay coworker, they have someone in their life who's, you know, whispering in their ear like, well, Trump wants to put me into a camp. And, you know, they feel conflicted and they find our content and they start realizing that none of this stuff is true. Wow. All right, Chadwick Moore. Oh, by the way, aren't you so glad our Hawkeyes beat Minnesota last weekend? Oh, yeah. Oh, Wasn't that great? So wonderful. <laughs> Just considering what their policies are up there. Did they win the Women's National Championship basketball? Who? Oh, guys. Okay, <laughs> stop it. Too, too soon. Uh, Chadwick Moore, you can follow him on X at Chadwick underscore Moore, New York Times bestselling author of Tucker, and he's also out on the road with Log Cabin Republicans. Chadwick, thank you, as always, for joining us. Thank you so much. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's like a hot, steaming cup of information.